1976 got underway, attention of many Purdue enthusiasts focused on the basketball team. The Boilermakers won the last three games of the season and finished third in the conference, behind undefeated Indiana and Michigan, who went on to take first and second in the NCAA championships. For all games, the Purdue record was 16 and 11. Senior Bruce Parkinson broke his wrist in the second game of the season and was redshirted and Eugene Parker emerged as team leader. The Fort Wayne sophomore scored in double figures in all 27 games, averaging 15.6 points and hitting 50.8% of his shots. He was voted the team's most valuable player and was named the Big Ten's second team. Another sophomore, Walter Jordan, was the team's scoring leader, averaging 16.9 points, and the leading rebounder, averaging 9.2 for the 27 games. The Purdue University Speech and Hearing Clinic is part of the Department of Audiology and Speech Sciences. For some 40 years now, it's provided free clinical help to children and adults with speech and hearing problems. No fees are charged because both training and research functions are met through the clinic. Professor Douglas Knoll is head of the Department of Audiology and Speech Sciences. There are really three segments to our department, uh, service, research, and training. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes to talk about each of these three different aspects of the program. Service uh, involves the primarily the speech and hearing clinic. Uh, individuals with speech, language, hearing problems can come to the speech and hearing clinic and receive services to help the correct their particular problems. Um, research aspect is also of extreme importance in our department. The kinds of research activities that are going on just are extremely wide. Much of our research is also quite uh, interdisciplinary. That is, it involves a variety of different uh, areas, such as psychology, engineering, physics, physiology, and so forth, because the speech and hearing mechanism uh, crosses across many different kinds of disciplines. We're also involved in some kinds of research activities in looking at the hearing aid. Uh, the hearing aid, is, after all, is a kind of engineering device and as a consequence, some of the research that we're doing also involves people in engineering. And then the third segment, that of teaching, involves the preparation of individuals at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral level to become speech and hearing clinicians. Most of the individuals who receive a master's degree in our program will go out as a speech and hearing clinician into a variety of job settings in the public schools, in hospitals, rehabilitation centers, and so forth. Individuals who receive the doctoral degree may uh, end up as research specialists or educators in university settings, or they themselves may get into a variety of kinds of clinical settings. Oral communication is certainly the most important function, I suppose, that man has. And if an individual has some difficulties with his speech and language or hearing, by the time he or she enters school, inevitably that person is going to have some difficulties in, in handling school kinds of activities. And for this reason, it's extremely important that these problems attempt to be corrected uh, prior to the time that the child enters school, if at all possible. Good. So sound. Cupcake. Cupcake. Good, that was a nice one. This. Cup. 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 Good. That's, you're making some good sounds, and that's way up here, right? That's up in your tongue, way in back. That's a good cuss sound. Corn. Corn. So we have uh, very intensive preschool types of programs, either on an individual basis, or the child may come into uh, one of our preschool group kinds of programs. One of the group programs for our preschool children, which is extremely interesting, is that of the uh, 
springboard program or the preschool program for the hearing impaired child. These children come in uh, several times a week and receive group help to assist them with their hearing problems. Dr. John D. Axtell, Purdue University professor of agronomy, received the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation Award for the most significant contribution to American agriculture in the past one to three years. The award, a $10,000 cash gift, was presented in April at a special ceremony. The main reason the project was initiated first uh, by uh, a contract with the Agency for International Development was to improve the, the uh, value, the food value of, of the sorghum grain, which is an important food for a couple of hundred million people in the world. Uh, primarily those in Africa and Asia. So essentially what we set out to do was to take uh, the sorghum grain, which is a very good feed grain, and make it into a good food grain, uh, comparable in value to wheat uh, or rice or some of the other food grains that are the major sources of carbohydrate and protein. Three Purdue University engineers were elected to the National Academy of Engineering the highest professional distinction that can be conferred on an engineer. King Sun Fu, Goss Distinguished Professor of Engineering and Professor of Electrical Engineering, was cited for his contributions to pattern recognition in the solution of important societal problems. Arthur G. Hansen, Purdue President and Professor of Mechanical Engineering, was cited for his pioneering work in flow phenomena in turbo machine blade rows and ducts and for contributions to engineering education. Reinhard Schumann, Jr., Goss Distinguished Professor of Engineering and Professor of Metallurgical Engineering, was cited for his contributions to the science of extractive metallurgy and applications to process analysis and design. The Undergraduate Teaching Incentive Award program continues to be a success. The students pick the winners and it's not a popularity poll. Some real tough grading teachers have won. There are now awards in all nine engineering schools and departments and in each of the other eight schools of the university. A recent recipient is Professor Ed Page of the Animal Science Department. The Purdue Alumni Foundation Undergraduate Teaching Incentive Award is an excellent program in my opinion and at least two things are accomplished. One, it recognizes the teacher that has made an unusual effort in communicating his knowledge and skills to the students. And two, it gives students an opportunity to evaluate his teachers. This permits the students to think about those characteristics that the good teacher must possess. In my opinion, the good teacher guides the studies of students and motivates them to learn and then challenges them with questions that stimulates them to organize their thought processes in a logical manner. To a distant spectator, a racing crew is a picture of grace and beauty, with a 60-foot shell cutting the water and the crew working rhythmically together. But rowing is a sport with the emphasis on endurance and conditioning. The Purdue crew is in its 26th year and is the oldest and largest intercollegiate rowing club in the United States. It is funded through the Division of Recreational Sports and contributions from former crew members made through the Alumni Foundation. crew has had an 80% winning percentage over the last two years. They have a solid winning record rowing against strong competition, including Notre Dame, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. The women's crew, now in its third year, and the men's lightweight team have been undefeated in dual meets the past two years. Both are reigning Midwest Intercollegiate Rowing Association champions. Almost all these athletes have never rowed before coming to Purdue. Letters and brochures are sent to incoming freshmen, resulting this year in a turnout of over 200 prospective crew members. Once the number was cut to 20 men and 12 women, we ended up with the best group ever to enter the Purdue rowing program. 
A small vehicle that looks like a red wedge on wheels has been seen on the campus for the past year. Actually, it's a city car, acquired on a trial basis from Sebring Vanguard Incorporated of Sebring, Florida, to deliver freight bills, registered mail, and other small emergency items. Aside from its unusual looks, what really makes the car different is that it's completely electric. It was placed in operation in June 1975, and in the first year it was driven about 1,800 miles. Total fuel consumed was 961 kilowatts, which cost $20.31. And that works out to just a trifle over one cent per mile. It's made of aluminum and fiberglass and is absolutely environment safe. No noise and certainly no pollution. The Boilermaker Special led the Bicentennial Fourth of July Parade through downtown Lafayette. Classes for the 1976-77 school year began in August for an estimated 30,000 students, a record enrollment for the West Lafayette campus. This is an increase of more than 1,000 over last year. Enrollment at the regional campuses was about 13,500, an increase of nearly 1,450 over last year, bringing the total to about 43,500. Purdue houses about half of its undergraduate students, so the increase, along with a decline in the number of married students, made it possible to convert some 48 apartment units from married student courts to accommodate some of them. Also, 36 efficiency apartments in Ross Aid 1, near the southwest corner of the football stadium, were reassigned to undergraduates. About 150 more were put in Graduate House East and West. And about 250 students were provided quarters in local motels. Many were absorbed into the halls for the second semester. The dramatic increase in applications and limitations of staff and facilities made it necessary to cut off admissions in August of out-of-state residents for the fall semester. The action applied only to the West Lafayette campus. The Memorial Union, Hall of Music, Globe Playhouse, Black Culture Center, residence halls, graduate houses, and married student housing have all played an important part in the lives of students for many years. A new Office of Vice President for Housing and Food Services was created, which recognized the importance of the contribution of these areas to the overall operation of the university. John C. Smalley, Purdue Business Administration graduate, class of 1941, has been managing Purdue residence halls for 30 years. As a vice president, his wealth of experience will be of great value to the university. The new dean of the School of Science is Dr. Alan H. Clark, a mathematics professor from Brown University. Dean Clark comes to Purdue with wide experience in teaching in Europe as well as the United States. The state legislature this year created the position of a student voting member on the board of trustees. Larry Greeshaber, a graduate student in clinical pharmacy, was interviewed and selected by the governor from three final candidates and is the first to hold the position. Purdue School of Home Economics is now called the School of Consumer and Family Sciences. The name change was the result of long faculty deliberations and communications with students, alumni, and cooperative extension staff. The school, which has had a 50% increase in enrollment since 1970, offers studies in retailing, restaurant, hotel, and institutional management, dietetics, housing, and nursery kindergarten teaching. The home economics title was considered too narrow to describe these programs. The Home Economics Administration building has been renamed Winthrop E. Stone Hall after Winthrop E. Stone, Purdue president from 1900 to 1921. It was during Stone's administration that the school had its beginnings as the Department of Home Economics in the School of Science. The former Home Economics Building No. 2, the original building of the school, is renamed Mary L. Matthews Hall for the university's first dean of the School of Home Economics. She became dean in 1926 and served until 1953, pioneering the growth and development 
of one of the first schools of its kind in the nation. She served as dean longer than any other person. The A.A. A. Potter Engineering Center is nearing completion as the year ends. The library portion will be open to students in January for use during the second semester. Offices, laboratory, and classroom facilities will be moved in during the year with dedication ceremonies scheduled for April. The new building to be used by the Department of Nursing and the School of Technology is expected to be completed about June 1977. It will provide classrooms, offices, and a learning resources center. The department hopes to move in by fall semester. Former Purdue basketball coach Ray Eddy is retiring at the end of the year. Eddy enrolled at Purdue as a freshman in 1929 and began a long and fruitful career. He played ball with teammate John Wooden, and after 16 years successfully coaching high school basketball, he returned to take the head coaching job at Purdue in 1951. After 14 years here in 1965, he stepped down to become an assistant to Red Mackey, and later assistant athletic director to George King. The football team had a new artificial turf practice field to work on this year. A gift of Charles Clark, class of 1906, it made preparation for road games much better, since all the conference opponents have the artificial turf in their stadiums. The Boiler footballers jumped off to a good start, winning the first two conference outings against Northwestern and Wisconsin. Then the injuries began to take their toll. Season ended up five and six overall. But no one who was there will forget when number one Michigan came to West Lafayette. The black and gold played super football. They dominated the game from every angle. Purdue ahead 16 to 14, Michigan moved to the 19-yard line and stalled. There were 14 seconds left on the clock, and they went for the field goal, which was wide. The celebration that followed told the story. Fans can look forward to another exciting year under new coach Jim Young, who comes to Lafayette from the University of Arizona. I think it's a great challenge to be the coach. Uh, we're looking forward. Uh, to the recruiting season, to spring practice, and to next fall. And I'll say this, uh, we're not going to be out to rebuild or anything like that. Uh, I believe that you go right at the situation, and uh, we're going out to win and planning on winning next fall. And that's going to be our approach uh, to the program. Nineteen seventy-six was a year of growth and challenge. Purdue President Arthur Hansen. Purdue has indeed grown in size and outreach. Fortunately, Purdue still remains an institution of excellence. This has been made possible by carefully controlling all of our costs and because of an increase in private support. Unfortunately, on the other hand, the real income from the state over the past five years has not grown. As a consequence, we will turn even more to seeking help from the outside. We hope that the response from those who know and respect Purdue will be most positive.